They were trying to hire Christian Braille. Bale? Braille? Oh, <laughs> dude. <laughs> See, the thing is, is that that's not too... <laughs> <laughs> that was my last one in case you wanted wow. to know. Hey, welcome to Pork Chops, Rice, and Peaches. I'm Richard. And I'm Noah. And you might hear studio dogs in the background. You know what's the toughest part about being Batman? What? Knowing that you'll never make your parents proud. <laughs> Did you change it? Since? Just trying to... Hey, right. welcome to Pork Chops, <laughs> Rice, and Peaches. I'm Richard. I'm Noah. Why is Batman jealous of Superman? Why? Superman got adopted. <laughs> How many of these do you have? Oh, I'll just save the rest of them for later, but we <sighs> needed a new intro. <laughs> oh, boy. Batman versus Superman, round two, because the first time we recorded this video, there was no audio, much to my great annoyance. So if you're watching this, it means it worked. So, Batman versus Superman. It was your first time seeing it. It was my fourth. And we are splitting the aisle on this, you on know, this movie. So, so here was a here was a movie that I never wanted to see. Mhm. Mm and <clears throat> primarily because I didn't want to see Ben Affleck as as Batman. Yeah. And I I it was He's just one of those that he just talks too much outside of in interviews and it's just it draws you out of the experience yeah and, when and you see these actors and from what i've seen him do i didn't think he would be a good batman yeah so here's the other uh thing that prevented me from seeing it and that was in all the trailers when he's wearing the suit that he fights superman in he looked fat i mean he looked really <laughs> fat he looked so fat it was like i don't want to go see fat batman i just don't <laughs> Um, yes, I am fat shaming the caped crusader. It's just not something that you want to see. And uh, I mean, it's like you know, <laughs> Jigglypuff in the DC universe. And I, <laughs> I <laughs> so I couldn't have been more wrong. Let me start off by saying this: I couldn't have been more wrong. I really enjoyed Ben Affleck's turn as Bruce Wayne from okay. from the beginning of the movie. I I did. I just I really enjoyed it. And and I have to say. Batman with bullets and unresolved anger issues is a really good Batman. It really and, is. And a nice departure from the, I have these rules, the, you know, these no-kill policies I must follow. This was Batman the way he should be. A little grittier, a little angrier, a little more you know, realistic. Yeah. Um, so so I, I, I shouldn't have prejudged the movie, the actor, the role right uh, yep. I, I really enjoyed it so um this is a movie also i was able to just kind of i don't know just kind of go for the ride I, okay. I i could sit down and just consume the content i did follow my old literature rule yeah i watched it once for pleasure i did not allow myself to take any notes okay and then i watched it once for for study Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't enjoy it anywhere near as much the second time. Okay. Um, because I was, you know, looking at, you know, different aspects of it. And, uh, you know, so I really, I broke the movie down to the good, the bad, the ugly. Yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> actually, actually, I did, I did the good, the bad, the amusing okay. was, was my, you know, because there are things about the movie that I really enjoyed. And, and we know from talking before yep. that you couldn't hear. That you don't know, but you're getting for the first time. Wow, you really didn't like this movie. I really did not like this movie. I didn't like it when it came out. I didn't like it when the director's cut was released, which is the version that we watched for this discussion. Although I will say the director's cut is leagues better than the original theater cut. This movie just has so many problems that I was not able to let it go. Okay. I was not able to just let the action on screen 
suck me into it. I wasn't able to get into this this mindset of consume the content for this movie. I think for this movie, I think this is my Thor Ragnarok experience. <laughs> <laughs> but there are there are things that I enjoy in this movie. First off, I obviously Henry Cavill as Superman. Really good. I, I will watch just about anything that Henry Cavill is in at this point. Henry Cav I really enjoy watching Henry Cavill. I enjoyed him in The Witcher. I think he was the only good thing in that show. Uh, it's starting to become a trend. And uh, I there's a there's a movie he did, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, that I really want to see. Okay. I've seen him in Man from Uncle. He's always entertaining. Ben Affleck, I know from some Boston cop movies with Mark Wahlberg, I believe, or is it I think it's him and Jeremy Renner are in a are in a bank heist movie in Boston. And uh and and Daredevil. The original Daredevil right. with Michael Clark Duncan as Kingpin. Okay. And it's I I also had very little hope for it until I saw this version of Batman, which is darker, grittier, uses guns and is mm -hmm. far more realistic in that aspect for the type of traumatized character that he is i really enjoy ben affleck's batman i really enjoy ben affleck's batman it is a shame that we did not get more of ben affleck's batman besides like the two and a half movies that we got now <laughs> the rest of this movie the, that's bat basically it there's there's the batman fight at the end there's batman there's Superman. Lois Lane is tolerable just because Amy Adams is a good Lois Lane in a bad movie. And <sighs> I hate Lex Luthor, but we'll get into that later. Well, you know, it's, if there's, we're, if a, we're there's a summary. The, the, I have two things that, that, that are in the list of the bad for this movie. Uh, no, actually, I've got three down here. Uh, okay. First of all... Uh, Hollywood needs to uh, learn, the Hollywood writers need to learn the difference between a democracy and a republic. Yep. Uh, it would really help society as a whole with keeping uh, every citizen understanding that we are not a democracy. We are a republic. It is an important distinction. And when Senator Fisk starts a sentence with, in a democracy, it should be in a republic. And that just... That just seems like nitpicking, but it screamed out no, at me it, as, my goodness, learn what you're talking no, it, about. No, you're, you, that point actually, it weakens their, what she's saying. Like, like if you, if you, if she had said in a republic or in this republic that we are in, where she is a democratically elected leader, it would have helped her point to stress that she is a democratically elected leader that represents the people. Yes. It would have helped so much better. Yes. So you'd think for a guy like Zack Snyder who wants to push that the government is concerned about, you know, the 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 rights of the citizens in this world where superpowered beings exist mm -hmm. that they would he would phrase the terminology correctly to impact more but yep. just blandly stating that you know democracy it's like no 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 so this. <laughs> there's a lot of staring in this movie Ugh. there's a lot of staring by lois by lex by clark and i was beginning to think that they brought in the screenwriters from ahsoka yeah um <laughs> when did blank long Blank, silent stares replace dialogue in television and movies. Uh, one of my complaints about Ahsoka was that there was just uh, the, people just standing and staring. Yep. You know, at, maybe it's because they're staring at green screens and they have nothing to react to. Yeah. Um, but, but there's... I long for better quality writing. There's far too much silence you know, extended gaps of people oh, yeah. staring. I hate it. Yep. Um, and then, of course, you know, the horrible, absolutely horrible use of fourth wall breaks. Look, either writers create a fiction story, you want fictional reporters, hire actors to pretend like they're reporters. You want uh, fictional talk show personalities, hire people to pretend that they are. That we had Charlie Rose, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, Dana Bash, Nancy Grace, Anderson Cooper, John Stewart, Soledad O'Brien. Look, 
just yeah keep ruining the escapism of the movie by putting in all of these personalities it's not it doesn't make your world more immersive to remind me of figures that, that i see in real life like yeah. I, yeah. I i don't read a superman comic and think where's neil degrasse tyson giving his opinion <laughs> on the physics of how superman can fly and how it completely rewrites the laws of physics uh-huh. and how we have to reconsider einstein's theories and because you know that's what he would do in real life i don't want to think about that i watch watching enough space videos on my own i don't need that right <laughs> this is my escape so you know give us fictional characters tell the fictional story stop crossing the two you know it's Oof. it's uh it's it, it it makes the those personalities feel good oh i got to be in a superman movie it's oh. not good for not good for audiences like him or hate him Zack snyder had a plan for his universe okay i'm not quite sold yet that it was a good plan sorry snyderverse fans but he at least had a vision and this is a movie that was plagued by <coughs> corporate interference. That's Warner unfortunate. Brothers, Warner Brothers hired Zack Snyder to do a job. They let him make one movie, Man of Steel, okay. which I believe was 2013 or 2014. Okay. Three years later, as Captain America Civil War is hitting theaters, 2016, they want this made. So that they can have their own versus movie in a okay. universe with one pre existing movie. So now you have the issue where Zach wants to make a Batman versus Superman movie because that's what he's told he has to do. He wants to make a Batman movie. He wants to make a Justice League prequel. He wants to introduce Wonder Woman into the story. He wants to set up Darkseid and Stephen Wolf. Spoilers. He wants to get Lex Luthor in the mix. He wants to do all these things. He wants to introduce Flashpoint. He wants to introduce Dark Reign of Superman. He wants to introduce the Death of Superman storyline. He has so many ideas of stories he can pull from the comics and put his own twist on it. He hires Jeffrey Dean Morgan to play Arthur Wayne in a 30-second flashback at the beginning of the movie. An A-list actor for that. You know he was playing Flashpoint Batman, which is Arthur Wayne when Bruce Wayne and Martha Wayne die. Thomas Wayne began, or Arthur sorry, Wayne? Th- Thomas Wayne. Oh, okay, ah, gotcha. No, I no, that's okay. Arthur no, no, no. I, I, I why was... do I think Arthur Wayne? Thomas Wayne. Thomas. My bad. No, no. My bad. I, I was wondering if there was a, <laughs> a storyline no. I didn't. Yeah. Okay. So there was there's one of those there's ideas here. In corporate made him condense it. Well, I say made him. Zack Snyder probably should have taken a few of these things out. He very heavily congested this movie because he wanted to get all his ideas out. I think there's a bit of equal blame to be shared here. (laughs) The corporate shouldn't have forced him into a movie that needed to be three or four movies later. And he probably shouldn't have crammed all this stuff into said movie. Jeffrey Dean Morgan looked so much like John Aston at the beginning of this movie. I started <laughs> laughing. I did. I sat back and I went, "Oh look, it's Gomez from the Adams Family walking down the street." That was that was my <laughs> that was my first thought when I saw him. From the list of things that just amused me to no end. Oh. <sighs> okay, it's bad as an audience member when you see Batman start to fall down the well as a kid. You see. Bruce Wayne starts to fall down the well as a kid, and my first thought was, "Oh, if he only didn't survive that fall, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't I'll, be in this situation." Yeah, I and actually I did have that thought, you yeah. know, and that's not a good thing. And I don't know if that's a commentary in the movie or, or just. <clears throat> well, I, I think I'm no, I don't think I am. Um, <laughs> I'm tired of seeing the the Batman origin stuff, you know, worked in. This, the thing that I liked about the Pattinson movie yeah. uh, was that they didn't mess with that. They assume you know what it is. Exactly. They just Which assumed is good. you know. Because who doesn't right. know Batman's origin story at this point? If you don't know Batman's origin story, I need you to get out from under your rock, Patrick. Come on. Pattinson's Batman also proved that vampires do turn into bats. <laughs> so. How many more of these do you <laughs> Just one. 
in the realm of things that uh, make me question whether I'm a good person or not, uh, the beginning of this movie is hilarious when Bruce Wayne is running through the rubble, picking up steel beams. It's very reminiscent of past tragedies. And then he finds a little girl and he asks, where's your mother? And she looks up. And she points at the smoking remains Means of a skyscraper. Yeah, 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 yeah. I couldn't not laugh at that. <laughs> it's just, it's too perfect. <laughs> yeah, again, I don't know how much that says about me versus the movie. But, I don't know. Uh, I, so I think the best part of this movie was the third floor warehouse fight sequence when they're trying to uh, rescue Martha Kent. Oh, it absolutely um, is. It is. It is. You had shown me that once before yes and uh i was i was looking forward to seeing the whole thing because i just saw the snippet yep and i thoroughly enjoyed it it is um, a fantastically uh choreographed fight scene yeah it's just a really well made fight scene yeah it was it was it was it was it was really good i i particularly enjoyed the physics defying uh throwing the throwing the the crate with the cable but yeah. it really was it was just kind of fun that was one of those things where you could just kind of sit back and just take it for what it was it's oh, a yeah. comic book come to life oh yeah and you get to see stuff like that i really enjoyed that i enjoy the vaulting over the table grabbing the dude and smacking his head oh onto yeah the table. oh i know and i know i love a, yeah so good it's the um, type of stuff that you you watch as a stuntman and you're like i want to do that well you know what and and it's it's unfortunate because for as great as that sequence was the the fight in the desert compound was that bad yeah I'm yeah. <clears throat> I'm tired of seeing somebody take a gun, a stick, a pole, sweep someone's feet out from under them, and they fall to the ground and they never get up. Yeah. Especially someone wearing a helmet. Yep. Please. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, that's that's not a. Um, I, I guess. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I guess I guess as the audience, we're supposed to follow the main character and forget about the guy in the ground. But but when you shoot it as a wide and you can see everything going on, right. It's very easy yep. to spot. <laughs> The dude that's just lying there. Yep. It's also easy to spot the dude who's looking and waiting for the actor to be on cue. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> waiting to take his shot. No offense yes. to any of the stuntmen involved. It's a hard job. I get it. It's it's more a talk about the way it was shot. Yep. The, the gun snag <laughs> on Martha Wayne's pearls was really cool. I like the way the slide came back, grabbed the... the the mm -hmm. strand of pearls and broke it. I thought that was really fun. My my effect. question is, how does the robber just slide that into the yeah, finagle? I just um, Zack Snyder is very much a style. It was a stylistic over shot. Substance yeah. and stuff. Yeah, that in situations was. like that. Yeah, oddly enough, oh. um, seeing Chicago on the big screen always makes me smile. Uh, <laughs> it is not a fourth wall break for me. Yeah. I particularly enjoyed the fact that it wasn't the same street used in every clip of Chicago. Yeah. Um, Amy Adams is an excellent Lois Lane. She is. She is. She's, um, my, my very first take on, on Lex was that he was quirky and intelligent. Um, we didn't see Lex's backstory. We just accept Lex as who he is walking on the screen. Yeah. Uh, second trip through, I found Lex to be really annoying. I just did. Um, mm -hmm. uh, now, it is Alexander Luther, not Lex Luther. This is supposed to be Lex Luther's son. Right. So, I, that, that, but that's a reason... <laughs> Not an excuse. Right. The, I, uh, Jesse Eisenberg is a decent enough actor. I've seen him in other stuff. He's not bad. This was not a role for him. It's just, it's the Lex Luthor. He's conniving. He's smarmy. He's got a, just enough charisma. He like I grew up with the the two thousands cartoons where Kevin Conroy voiced Batman. Okay. And uh, the Lex Luthor in that was. Silky smooth. In every action. It was calculated. And even in defeat, he was head held high, had his pride. His ego would not be broken. Like, that is the Luther I grew up with. You know, it's like, you know what? You can have different interpretations. This was not a good one. <laughs> like... <laughs> I grew up with um, 
Let's see, who's the cast? I need to find the cast of, of the the first Superman the with original Christopher. Superman movie. No, yeah, with Christopher Reeve. I grew up with Gene Hackman as Lex Luthor. Yeah. Luther, right? And I don't know where he stands on the whole, you know, scale of who is Lex Luthor from the comic books. But he's uh, much more of a he's a goofier Lex Luthor, but the entire series is a lot that that entire first movie series is far cheesier. It's more reminiscent of the comics of that era, which were already far cheesier. Gotcha. You foiled my plans again, Superman! That sort of thing. So I kind of expect it out of that sort of movie. Well, it has that tone going from the beginning to the end. Who was Lex Luthor's assistant in that movie? I can picture the actor... I can hear his I voice. Know. It was. It it's was been so long since. Did, I've seen did you those want movies. me to do that, Mister Luther? Yeah, you yeah, know, it's that, and it's that and type of. It, you know, it's it just, very rem- reminiscent of the '60s Batman. So just a little, it takes itself a little more seriously. Yeah, that's a great way of describing it. <laughs> yeah. So, so this this version of Luther was at least head and shoulders above the very first one I was exposed to, mind you. I'm just dipping my toes into the DC universe here, truly. So, DC fans. This is all new to yep. me. Um, I, I have been solely Marvel for 20 years, yeah. you know, uh, or better. Um, I enjoyed uh, a healthy Lois and Clark relationship without the, the yeah. is he Superman, is he not Superman? I really appreciated you know? that over well, this, well, this and, series. Well, and there's just... a great question that didn't get answered. And, uh, and, and the question is, will they ever answer it? Can Superman love Lois and still be Superman? Can they make the relationship work? It was a great question. Yep. And um, and it was a legit question. And then it kind of got lost, understandably. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> burned out Wayne Manor and a Batmobile that looks like the Tumbler. Excellent. Just little carryover from the yeah. Christian Bale series. I really yep. enjoyed that. It was a nice touch. Um, Ooh, in the realm of great casting and great things in this movie, Jeremy Irons oh, is a yes. fantastic Alfred. Yes, he is. Why hasn't this man been okay. casted? It? I, Alfred is a role. We talked about it last time. It is now becoming a legacy role. Forget Batman. <coughs> Forget the list of actors who played Batman. The list of actors who have played Alfred, I don't think there's a single bad one. Okay. I don't think there's a single miscast. I don't think they are all so good alfred best character 10 out of 10 it, alfred is a, is the, is the role that, that 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 older male actors should go for it it doesn't it require so a, a, a lot of you know physical acting um we had alan napier from mm-hmm. the original batman series who was yep. was really good michael goff michael kane he was fun <sighs> sean pertwee in in gotham yep um andy circus in the Batman, in the Batman, Robert. right? And now, uh, we, and then we had Jeremy Irons before him. Who Jer- oh. Jeremy Irons was so passive aggressive. He was so sarcastic. So good. He was fantastic. But I also really believe more than any other. Like there's, there's, it's been a running gag in in the comics that I've picked up on that is, that fans all acknowledge. You don't mess with Alfred. If there's no, anyone, you don't. if there's anyone, and it's like all the villains know it, yeah, all the all the heroes know it. You don't pick a fight with Alfred, because everyone will come for you. Not just Batman and his Robins and their extended Bat family. Like everyone will come for you. Superman, Wonder Woman, they all go for you because everyone loves Alfred. And there's always in the recent years there's been this undertone that Alfred used to be a soldier and will fight if necessary and mm-hmm. has no problem dismatching. There's a mm-hmm. there's a comic where he's like, You might be familiar or someone's like, You won't kill me and Alfred's loading a shotgun. He's like, Oh, you're mistaking me for the master. You'll find that I do not share all of his morals. And then <laughs> shoots the dude. And I'm like, Okay, Jeremy Irons right. is that version yes, of he is. Alfred. Yes, he, he is, is that version of Alfred. Yeah, he he was he was fantastic. Oh. So in, with without all the little you know the the nitpicking about things things I like things I didn't like the the, the things that caught my attention in this movie the central question um, is Superman a god and and this was something that. Um, 
th that Luther, uh, his entire argument with Superman is based on the assumption that Superman believes he's a god. And at one point yeah. he even says, now God bows to my will. Yeah. Um, Batman says, you were never a god, you were never even a man. And, you know, my question is, when did Superman ever say that he was a god? When did yeah. he behave like he was a god? And um, uh, I, I think that, that there's, a, I don't know if I want to say jealousy on their part or a lot of assumptions made. Um, and then it asks the other question. We know what Superman can do. The question is, what should he do? Those were two questions asked in this movie. Yep. Neither one of them were answered. Neither one yep. of them were resolved. And I think a better resolution on that. Yeah. I, I feel like if you're going to pose a question, when a movie asks a question, it's nice to explore the answers. And I think this was a, I don't know because I've never really watched it, but this is what I've heard is that in the old Star Trek, Kirk always had to make decisions but he had Spock giving him a logical and someone else giving him a more emotional. That would be Dr. Have, McCoy. Yeah. McCoy. Yeah. And then he would have to come to the conclusion, either take a side, find a compromise, and then they live with whatever the choice is. You right. may not get an answer as to what the other option was, but you see what happens because of their choice, because of his choice. Right. Movies need to take that cue more often. If you're going to ask a question, explore the answers. Yes. Don't just state that there's two sides to an argument. Explore them. Civil War did that. It showed the fallout mm, of yes, it both did. of the characters' actions. Yes, it which did. Which is why it was better received upon release, I believe, because it's just a better written story. Yes. This, mo like, this movie, Zack Snyder, again, I feel like I don't want to give him... Too much credit but i also don't want to take too much credit away from him he already had this movie bloated with content a mm -hmm. little more focus on the story and the pressing issue at hand uh how about don't throw so many different things into the movie at one time mm -hmm. and put you know less is more focus yep. spend more time in depth on those other things he had a great story <coughs> concept right there with the with the fight between the question is superman a god why do they think Superman is a god? Has Superman ever portrayed himself as a god? Has he done it without knowing it? That's that. There's a question that I would have liked to have answered. Where did they get this idea? Yep. You know, why does Lex see him this way? Because we don't see why Lex doesn't like him. Most other versions of Lex, we usually get an explanation. And he'll explain, I hate you because... You do this. Right. You take away... Some versions of Lex are like, you take away our concept of free will. Because if there's someone who can stop us at any point in time, what's to stop you? Who can stop you? Someone needs to be able to stop you. I'm going to be that person. Right. There's there's a lot there. Lex is not taking that stance in this. He's like, I want these guys to fight. Yeah. Well, he wants to get rid of both of them. Yeah. You know, see, see, you know mutually assured destruction. Um, the, the, the unexpected laugh point of the movie, and this one, this one just amused me to no end, is Superman floating dead in space. Yeah. Because, because Superman's floating dead in space, and my thought was, Henry Cavill now knows what he will look like after a hundred years in the coffin. Because that is, that is exactly what he looked like while he was floating out there. And, uh, an unintentional, laughable moment uh oh. while while they were doing that so i don't know um i'll never watch this one again this is not a go back to movie no you know um it just isn't it it just really so. isn't i could go on about all the nitpicks i don't feel like it because i've and already been frustrated by technology i don't want to get frustrated by a movie you know so <laughs> in 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 prepping for this, I, I think I might have found a little bit of Batman lore that you might not be aware of. Um, that there was one of those. Oh, well, there was no. uh, early on. There was one of those little offshoot reboots. You know where they they tweak the story a little bit and reboot it and do a limited run edition. Uh, Ooh. early on in Batman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In in his career, where Batman was blind, and I think it might have been a, a response to Daredevil coming out. Hmm. And Hollywood actually considered uh, filming that story, hmm. which could have been very interesting. Oh, 
<laughs> that was my last one in case you wanted wow. to know. <laughs> this is what he has to put up with. <laughs> I sold that one really well, too. Thank you for tuning into this episode of Porch Chef Trace and Peaches. <laughs>